Hello, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Vlasti Malhoer. I work for the uh, OpenAvala systems. Uh, and right now, we will speak a little about the edge clouds and how we understand the, uh, the edge clouds uh, in context with the, with the OpenAvala. Uh, I have to say that I won't do any, any like a real demo, but I'm starting just, uh, just to uh, show uh, something. And I will describe it a little later. So just for the, for, the, for the reference. So uh, about the Edge Cloud, it's, uh, it's necessary to say that uh, our work, our current work, and our future works uh, uh, received the funding from the EU, EU, uh, EU Union uh, from, uh, from, from the Horizon 2020 uh, research program. Uh, this talk uh, is divided into mainly three parts. Uh, in general, what is Open Ebola, if you don't know, uh, then uh, how we understand the edge clouds, and then what we do or uh, what approach we, uh, or what, what tools we provide to build the edge clouds in the Open Ebola. So uh, just a quick poll. Who knows what is Open Ebola? Just a quick, good. And who uses Open Ebola? Great. So uh, just, to, just to summarize, uh, OpenEbola is a framework to build infrastructure as a service cloud. Mainly we focus on the private cloud. Uh, we talk about virtual machines powered by KVM or vCenter uh, and system containers powered by LXD. Uh, we support various cloud deployment architectures, but uh, mainly what we focus is, uh, on is uh, on-premises private cloud. Uh, Usually, it's appreciate, OpenEbola is appreciated for being uh, light and simple, extensible, easily upgradable when compared to uh, other, other, uh, other systems. It supports uh, various popular uh, Linux distributions, CentOS, RHEL, Ubuntu, Debian, and so on. And it's uh, fully open source uh, under Apache license. And uh, it's with us for some time already. Uh, this is how it looks like from the perspective of the graphical control interface. A list of virtual machines at the, at the top, a list of buttons you can control, reboot, and uh, power of distro, and, and this kind of stuff. <coughs> uh, if you want to like, uh, see all the features, uh, there is a discover page which uh, lists them. Uh, if you want to try the open Ebola, there is a really cool tool uh, uh, written in a, in, a, in, a, in a shell called Mini One, which simply uh, configures all the open Ebola, uh, like a front end part and the hypervisor part, on a single selected nos uh, ho node. Simply creates uh, some, some kind of evaluation or testing or maybe development environment. So uh, it's, it's, it's really great and it takes just uh, five minutes or something. If uh, even interested more, uh, let me invite you to the OpenEbola conference, which, which is uh, like every year. This year it's in, in Brussels, uh, just a few, uh, few months later. Uh, now uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's focus on the, on the, on the Edge Cloud. Uh, what is Edge Cloud for us? For us, it's, uh, uh, the Edge Clouds are the micro data centers, which are uh, with some kind of cloud-like capabilities and are deployed uh, very near to the end, uh, end users or end devices they, uh, they, uh, they need to interact with. So the, the benefits are uh, to provide a lower latencies, uh, provide like a new features which this, uh, this uh, lower latencies allows. Uh, probably some preprocessing can happen in, in, the, in the edge cloud. So, so the data which are sent to the central cloud are uh, much much lower, or there can be a need for due to some security or privacy reasons, but uh, everything is not just a, just a green uh, or uh, or good. There are some some limitations. Limitations uh, comes with a limited uh, offer of the hardware or software we can we can we can use in the edge, and uh, there are also some risks, potential data loss or maintenance overhead and so on. But uh, from the perspective of the Open Ebola, edge clouds are very similar, or should be should be very similar to the on-premises cloud, which is on the on the left side. So the like a main difference is uh, we can expect there will be much more uh, such uh, such uh, s smaller clouds, and uh, they will have kind of dynamic nature. They can be uh, created dynamically. Uh, destroyed and any time uh, at any time we uh, we need so they are kind of ephemeral 
they are also restricted and kind of uh, limited. From the implementation perspective, we talk about the infrastructure edge. So that's the part of the edge which is, uh, which is powerful enough to uh, run like a, a more, more, more demanding uh, computation and so on. Uh, our, our aim is to take the technology we are using for the on-premises cloud, all the KVMs, LXD, VXLANs, and uh, these, uh, all these building parts, and just move it to the edge cloud. Of course, with help of some specialized drivers and uh, in a form which, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, like a designed to, uh, to run in the edge cloud. Uh, we very much rely on the existence of a bare metal cloud. So uh, OpenEbola never uh, installed the physical hosts operating system and, and these kind of things, and it won't do. So we expect that there is some service provider uh, which manages the infrastructure and is able to give us uh, or give users the, the resources which can be used to build the edge cloud. Uh, the second important part is uh, Automation. Everything is automated. Uh, on bare metal cloud, we don't like a care that much. It's the it's the provider's uh, uh, duty. But uh, on the on the host level, everything is automated. Uh, hypervisor is installed. Operating system is configured to to run uh, as as part of like a virtualization cluster. And uh, it's good to say uh, that uh, the only thing we do is just take all the great open source, uh, open source tools we have, distributions, hypervisors, and so on, and put it together to build uh, open source edge cloud. <coughs> so to summarize, uh, the OpenEbola edge clouds are just uh, limited OpenEbola virtualization clusters you might be running already uh, on premises. Uh, they are deployed on infrastructure of some third party, they are managed fully automatically, and uh, I've introduced this, this kind of buzzword infrastructure service in infrastructure service. Because uh, when you are running a virtualization cluster on premises, everything is kind of okay for you. You have uh, hosts under full control, you have storage, you have network, and choose your addresses. So you don't have any problems. But uh, if you have to deploy the similar virtualization cluster uh, on some third-party infrastructure, probably hosts are also okay, storage as, as well. But when it comes to networking, we can expect there will be some limitations introduced by the provider. And uh, regarding the IP addresses, there definitely will be some restrictions. So these, these two things, network things, are kind of uh, challenging, challenging parts. We have, uh, we have experienced. From the network perspective, it's very environment specific because various providers introduces some various features like a dedicated VLANs for you, but also some limitations like a no multicast support. So uh, the solution or the approach we have to, to take is introduce some kind of uh, common vir virtual network model which is able to work no matter on uh, uh, independently on the, on, the, on the provider. So we are using the overlay network, the VXLANs, but we don't rely on the multicasts. So it's just for the unicast only environment. <coughs> the more complicated thing is the IP addressing. In case of private addressing, maybe we don't care because we have our overlay network and we can do anything and nobody cares except us. In case of public IP addresses, the situation is much more complicated because we just can't take our favorite IPv4 address <laughs> and put it into a virtual machine and expect that uh, everything will work. <coughs> Usually the IP addresses are kind of agreed with the provider. You ask the provider for some pool and uh, they uh, give you uh, some addresses back. So uh, this like a workflow needs to be automated. And uh, uh, in, in case of uh, edge clouds, it's automated through 
some kind of uh, IP management IP management drivers, which exactly comes to the provider and tells uh, give me some IP addresses. So that, but uh, that's one, just one part of the problem. The another part of the problem is that you have some IP addresses, but uh, usually you need to uh, notify the provider when you want to uh, use the IP address on the selected host, so that uh, he updates the routing or or something to get the traffic to the uh, to the to the right place. So about the IP addresses, like uh, okay, two, two problems there. <coughs> the conclusion from this part is uh, simple. If you take uh, some existing infrastructure as a service framework and try to run, to run it within different or maybe the same infrastructure as a service, uh, you can expect <coughs> the things to work without problems. Now about the provisioning. Uh, about the provisioning and how do we, uh, how do we uh, like uh, build this code? Uh, OpenML comes with a set of specialized tool drivers and configurations, which uh, simply talks to the providers and builds all the cloud just li like a, like a, with a single command command run. Mainly we target on the edge clouds, but possibly uh, it doesn't have to be only only edge clouds. So once again, it's a one provision tool which uh, manages the whole life cycle of this uh, of this edge cloud. It's command line only. Then we have some kind of integration drivers. It's good to say that uh, when uh, some like a third party or provider se select it, there needs to be two kind of drivers. One driver which is able to allocate some hosts from the provider or release the uh, release the hosts back. And uh, the other thing that is mentioned, uh, IP management uh, uh, integration driver, let's say. And uh, of course, we have uh, hosts with base operating system. We have some addresses, IP addresses. Then the missing part is to configure the hosts so that they can be part of uh, OpenAble cluster. So uh, the last part is uh, like a configuration playbooks and roles for the reference architectures. <clears throat> That's uh, what uh, user or cloud administrator usually gets, but uh, he has to do something. He has to write some provision descriptor which exactly specifies uh, what provider to choose, what are the credentials for the provider, uh, what hardware configuration to use for, 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 for the machines, uh, what to create in, in, inside the open EBOLA, what data stores, virtual networks, and so on, and also how to configure the host inside. This is created by the uh, infrastructure administrator, and the process is, the high-level process, is uh, uh, as simple as displayed here. So basically, uh, prepare the descriptor, pass it to the tool, wait 10, 15 minutes, and uh, you will get an uh, independent uh, virtualization cluster at the edge. Uh, management features of this tool are like a very, very simple, very limited. It can create an edge cluster and destroy the edge cluster, and the other other options are more host uh, host focused. Power of re reboot, resume, and uh, and so on. So uh, to summarize the current state, uh, we have an integration. I would say a good integration with the packet provider, and we have some partial integration with the EC2. We have a tool, I will show it a little later, hopefully, uh, which can deploy the cloud. It's more like an advanced tool. There are some missing features, like a, a cluster can be scaled out or scale in, uh, and the architecture which is deployed there is very simple, like a single, single static one. The future plans, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have received some funding from Euro European Union. Uh, the idea is to take uh, what we have and to build from that some like uh, easy to use uh, edge cloud solution, which which uh, uh, which uh, incorpor incorporates some catalog for or for the edge providers and uh, marketplace for the edge application and so on. Uh, mainly, that means that. 
we will get uh, new integration drivers for new providers. We will get uh, new features like a cluster scaling or a cluster update. Uh, the work in progress is a support for lightweight virtual machine monitors like a firecracker and uh, caching uh, data stores and possibly cross locations networking. Good. Uh, about the documentation, if you go to the Openebla or docs.openebla.org, uh, there is a section which is called Disaggregated Data Centers, which describes all these things and tooling and how to write the, the provision descriptor or what configurations you can use and how to parameterize it. Uh, also, I've mentioned the mini one tool uh, at the beginning, which usually deploys just KVM or, or LXD. Uh, single host and uh, evaluation environment, but it can uh, also deploy the edge. Uh, as uh, seen on the screenshot, it just needs some, some, some parameters like uh, select the provider and uh, give some token and project, and uh, it uh, does uh, everything automatically. <coughs> uh, this is not uh, something like an artificial, artificial thing, thing, but uh, we, have, uh, we, we did some use case validation demos. Uh, the most important or the most interesting thing is the video gaming, when we have used this tool to deploy around the world 17 edge locations, uh, which were like uh, small KVM clusters, and run on each location one virtual machine which was running inside the uh, Wolfenstein enemy territory uh, game server, and then from the office we connected to random one in, in Sydney and we could play, and it worked simply. It, it was as easy as running just, uh, just a tool and waiting, unfortunately, 25 minutes, because uh, some locations like Japan uh, took uh, more time than, uh, than uh, some other locations which were much near. Uh, we have uh, this nice uh, data sheet. We describe all, all these all these demos. Uh, we can we can give you if you are if you are interested. Also, we have uh, stickers. If you are openable a user or or just interested, come come to us, and uh, we will give you uh, all like a, like a details uh, you would be interested in. So uh, maybe we have some time for demo. Uh, firstly. I will probably show uh, how the provision descriptor to build the cloud looks like. It doesn't have to be necessary to understand all, all, all the parts, but just the concept of what, what's it, what is necessary to specify, right? So uh, on this page, uh, uh, the most important part is the playbook, exactly the configuration applied uh, on the host. Then there are some defaults which are specifying the like a driver and, and credentials. We are also choosing the bare metal you know, uh, hardware type and uh, CentOS and so on. But uh, on the, on the, in the next part, we just list what host and the number we want to, we want to de deploy. Then we specify data stores, which should appear in the open Ebola. And the last part are the networks. Exactly this is the, this is the thing which creates the public IP network with the IPEM packet driver, and it requests uh, two IP addresses, two IPv4 addresses from the provider. And uh, there are some private networks. <coughs> so basically, this is enough. And uh, I've started this provision command before I, uh, before I started the presentation, and you can see it took 20 minutes, oh, par sorry, 12 minutes, uh, to deploy uh, two hosts, to deploy three virtual networks, and uh, some some data stores. Uh, maybe I can I can try to sub try to start some virtual machine. I have to do some some like a workaround. Uh, to make this working because I have Alpine image here locally on my laptop and I just share it to the edge cluster I have right now deployed. And I go to the open Ebola. I'll make it a little 
smaller. Yeah, I'm finishing. And the thing is that I will run this Alpine Linux on the edge cluster I have right now deployed. It would run as is. The what is the uh, what is the uh, the interesting part is the networking. So I will specify a hostonly network not to break it, and I will give it an alias for the public networking. So. Maybe I can try two virtual machines. Good. And uh, if we wait for like uh, 20, 30 seconds, it's already deploying. We can check what is the host exactly. Uh, OK. Uh, we can't check, but trust me, it's a it's a packet hosted uh, packet hosted machine in in Amsterdam. Yeah, maybe I can show the packet dashboard. It was updated, so you can see this is the FOSDEM node seventy five seventy seven, which is exactly what is what is seen here. Yeah, unfortunate thing is that it's copying the image. But uh, if that happens, we should be able to to ping the virtual machine there. So, and that that that's the goal. That's the goal. On third provider, on third parties infrastructure, be able to build a KVM LXD virtualization cluster we are used to, and have the most of the features we are used to from the on-premises and also be kind of integrated with the provider, have a public network working and so on. So, yeah, uh, let's check the first one just. It's booting and I can just try to log in. Wow, I could log in there. I can check the I've config. And I can see the, the private address, which is assigned inside, is, is the very same. It's point, point 0.3 address. And trust me that it's the Alpine Linux I just deployed. I can see, can see your time, zero minutes. So that's it. Uh, uh, the very last thing I will show is that uh, the way I have created this, uh, this virtualization graph cluster in just 12 minutes, I can destroy this cluster the very same, uh, the, f the, f the very same way. I just need to, uh, to remove the hack I did, uh, did previously. I'm trying to list the provisions. Delete it, and it won't work right now because we have running virtual machines there. But I can ask it to clean up, and it simply terminates the virtual machines both and when it's done it cancels the hosts and uh, releases the IP addresses back to the provider let's check there are no hosts and we can check the packet that everything was released they are not updating it and here's nothing <coughs> so uh, as said we have this, uh, this, uh, this data sheet here describing the use cases and, and, uh, and plans. You can talk to us if you are interested. Also, we have a stickers. Please come to us. Thank you.